Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to teach you five things that you can do right now to stop stressing out and achieve MCAT success. Now, studying for the MCAT can be one of the most stressful endeavors you have ever undertaken in your life. It can be especially stressful considering that you need to juggle research, volunteering, shadowing, and several other essential checklist items for your medical school application. In studying for the Behavioral Sciences section of the MCAT, you will learn about something called the Yurik's Dodson Law, which basically states that there is an optimal level of stress that will enhance performance. If you don't feel enough stress, you won't be motivated enough to work hard toward a top MCAT score. If you feel too much stress, you may impede your ability to learn and will not reach your potential. Because it is most common for students studying for the MCAT to experience too much stress, I'd like to briefly touch on five habits that will help you manage your stress in easy and healthy ways. And not only will these habits reduce your stress level, but they will also enhance your ability to learn and focus, allowing you to boost your MCAT score. The first thing you can do is to take regular study breaks. Most pre-meds have a really hard time taking breaks. Because most of us are type A workaholic personality types, taking breaks can be extremely difficult to do. We think to ourselves, every minute that I am not studying is a minute lost. When it comes to taking regular breaks, however, this could not be further from the truth. Recent research shows that a brief diversion from the task at hand will allow you to perform better. You can only study so long before your brain touch starts to slow down and lose focus. I would suggest breaking your study day into hour-long intervals in which you can study for 55 minutes, and then take a break for five minutes. During the 55 minutes of studying, be sure to only focus on studying. Turn off your cell phone, Facebook, cat videos, everything. Then during the five minute break, do whatever you want as long as it's not studying related. To help you in this effort, we've embedded short comedic YouTube videos from Studio C at the end of every video playlist in our free e-course at mcatselfprep.com. My second recommendation is to take a day off. I know it sounds counterintuitive to take an entire day off from studying when you have so much material to cover, but taking a day off once per week is extremely important in having a fresh and active brain on the other six days of the week. If you have a really busy schedule and can't afford to take an entire day off, at least consider taking a half day off. During your time off, feel free to do whatever you'd like as long as it isn't MCAT related. Many pre-meds get so busy with the MCAT that they forget to do the things that make them happy. Don't leave your family, friends, and important hobbies and interests in the dust in your effort to achieve MCAT success. These things can provide you with much needed support and fulfillment, allowing you to give studying a full effort. The next thing that you can do is to get tons of sleep. I talk to too many pre-meds who think they can do a full-time job from eight to five, volunteer shadow from five to 10 p.m., and then get their MCAT studying in from 10, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. instead of going to bed. This is a bad idea. When you're studying hard, the next most important activity for you is to sleep. Research shows that sleep is required for the consolidation of memories. Without it, you will struggle to absorb and recall what you are learning. Think about studying like pouring the cement foundation of a building. During sleep, this foundation will harden. Without sleep, however, the cement will not harden and the building will sink. In a similar way, your MCAT content foundation will never fully form without sleep, leaving you with a sinking MCAT score on test day. As a rule of thumb, you should try to get at least eight hours of sleep and you should never sacrifice sleep to study longer. Another thing you can do is to eat healthy. Whenever I have a student who is struggling to succeed and they seem like they're burning out, I ask them what they are eating. More often than not, the student will tell me that they have resorted to eating food like Pop-Tarts and Hot Pockets. Food is the fuel you need for studying. And if you are putting junk into the tank, don't expect your brain to perform well. Fruits, vegetables, and whole grains contain essential nutrients and energy substrates that your brain needs to perform processes related to learning and retaining new information. A brain that is well-fed will also have an increased ability to focus. I recommend for my students to take the time out of their study day to cook real food. Treat yourself. Spending an extra five to 10 minutes to make a healthy lunch is much more important than what you might have studied during that time. 
My final recommendation is to exercise daily. Studies have shown that aerobic exercise will actually increase the size of brain areas associated with memory, including the hippocampus. Exercise will also enhance your ability to sleep well and decrease your stress level. What could be better for a pre-med like yourself? I personally recommend starting your day with 30 to 60 minutes of vigorous exercise that will get your heart pumping and wake up your brain. This way, you can start off your study day with a brain that is alert, active, and ready to learn. One thing that I did while studying for the MCAT was going on walks while I reviewed my note cards. You can simply pull up our Quizlet practice questions on your phone and review them while you are walking around campus. Well, there you have it. Five simple strategies that you can implement today to decrease your stress level and enhance your ability to achieve a top MCAT score. Don't underestimate the power of these healthy habits. They are essential if you are looking to achieve your MCAT dreams. Best of luck studying, and please feel free to reach out with any questions along the way. I'm here to help. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like. And for more MCAT tips, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and please comment below with any questions, feedback, or ideas for future videos. I look forward to hearing from you. See you next time.